Dr. Matthew Bunsen, EWTN senior contributor and senior editor with the National Catholic Register, has been following the Gorsuch hearings. Thanks. Welcome back, Matthew. Great to be with you. Uh, Judge Gorsuch is the newest member of the High Court, so what do you think we can expect in his first days? Yeah, well, he's uh, not just the newest, he's also the youngest, and he, but he still knows his way around the building, as you just sure. pointed out. He clerked for Justice Kennedy, so he knows the ins and outs, which is going to be important because he, he's really going to have to hit the ground running. In just a couple of days, on the 13th, he's sitting with all of the other justices for the first time in a conference room. And they're going to be deciding cases that they want to take for the next term. And usually, if they're tied at 4-4, he's now going to be an important deciding vote, and not just in cases, but also that important fourth vote in allowing the, the court to pick up cases, including an important religious liberty one of a bakery in Colorado that is being penalized for refusing to bake cakes and, and service, mm -hmm. provide services to gay weddings. So you mentioned the case in Colorado. There's a yeah. large number of pending cases here. Any other in particular important cases for Catholics? Yeah, well, there are 13 cases still on the docket for the Supreme Court for this term. Uh, it runs the gamut from Second Amendment uh, to voter ID. The one that is going to be of most interest, I think, to Catholics is the Trinity Lutheran Church in Missouri. Uh, it is a case where the oral arguments begin on the 19th, and Judge Gorsuch will be participating. This is a religious liberty case because the state is refusing to provide grants and money to the church in order to upgrade its facilities. So everyone's watching this particular case. Based on what you know about Gorsuch, and you were yeah. following that hearing <laughs> confirmation yeah. that whole week, what do you think uh, his role is going to be on the court? Yeah, well, he arrives, as I said, as a youngest justice, so mm -hmm. he's going to be there for a very long time. Uh, in that second oath that he took today, he vows impartiality. He promises not to favor the rich over the poor. Those are strict constitutionalist credentials that he brings to the court. So not only is he succeeding Antonin Scalia, he's restoring that balance that you noted, and, and he's going to bring a voice for religious liberty to the court. You mentioned that religious liberty case before. Yeah. Do you anticipate he'll be a strong voice for religious liberty and following in footsteps of Scalia? Very much so. We know from some of his previous rulings he supported uh, Hobby Lobby against the government. He supported the Little Sisters of the Poor in their case against the HHS contraceptive mandate. So he's a strong defender of religious liberty, and I think he's going to be a voice for a very long time for religious freedom on the high court. Now you say he's the youngest one. At this point, we'll have to see how it all plays up. It'll be certainly very interesting. Dr. Matthew Bunsen, senior editor with the National Catholic Register and senior contributor with EWTN. Thanks so much. Good to be with you.